Okay, so in our last lessons we looked at uh, how to draw electron dot diagrams and then we also looked at the VSEPR theory, so how the shape of a molecule is. Now we'll be looking at electronegativity, or the ability for an atom to pull in electrons closer to itself compared to the other. So electronegativity is the relative ability for uh, an atom to attract the shared electrons in a bond towards itself. And this is different from ionization energy, which is the energy needed to put into the system to then remove an electron. So an electron is usually bound to the uh, positively charged nucleus of an atom. So electrons will be floating around here and being attracted to the positive nucleus. So if you need to get rid of it, you need to put energy into the system to then remove it. Otherwise, it will stay in there by itself. So electronegativity relates to the atom's attraction for electrons, which is what we went through just then. So this is an, a table of the electronegativity of certain atoms, and each uh, number represents its uh, relative ability to pull electrons in. So in this case, fluorine here on the electronegativity table has a value of 4, so it's very electronegative. Um, francium here has a value of 0 0.7, so it's not electroneg very electronegative. So the higher the number, that means the higher, it, uh, more electronegative it's going to be. So an electron density distribution, which is like this, uh, shows us how, where the electrons are going to be sitting in, the, in relation to the atoms. So for a smaller atom, it attracts bonding electrons more strongly than a larger atom. This is because the nucleus, which is positively charged, um, of a smaller atom is going to be closer to the atoms, um, to the electrons in the valence shells. So that means since the nucleus of a smaller atom is closer to the shared pair of electrons in a bond, it's going to be able to pull it in more tightly than that of a larger atom. So electron, uh, therefore electronegativity is inversely proportional to atomic size. So the smaller the atom, the more electronegative it's going to be. And the larger the atom, the less electronegative it's going to be. So electronegativity increases upper group as well as across a period. And non-metals are more electronegative than metals. So the most electronegative element is fluorine, whereas the least ele electronegative element is francium. And because we just said that the smaller the atom, it means it's going to be closer to the electrons, it's going to be more electronegative. And then when you have a large atom, the electrons are further away from it, and therefore it's going to have less pull to like, attract them back in. So if you can see here, francium has many shells, and these electrons in this outermost shell are really far away from the positively, positively charged nucleus. So just to recap before we answer the questions, we just talked about electron density and electronegativity. So electronegativity is the ability for the atom to pull electrons in, uh, in a shared pair, so in a covalent bond. Uh, but the ionization energy is the energy you need to put in to get an electron out. And then electronegativity um, has different effects. So the smaller the atom, that means the higher, the more uh, electronegative it's going to be. And the larger the atom, the less electronegative it's going to be. So in question 11, it asks, what is the general relationship between electronegativity and atomic size? And explain why. Here we need to uh, define what. Uh, the relationship is between electronegativity and atomic size. We also then need to explain why. So firstly, the general relationship between electronegativity and atomic size. So as the atomic size decreases, electronegativity increases. Because if it's too big, that means a shared pair of electrons are really far away from the positively charged nucleus and therefore there's not enough attraction to pull them in. So why is this? What we just said, 
a nucleus of a smaller atom is closer to the shared pair of electrons uh, of that of a large atom because there's not as many shells. So that's how we know that atomic size is related to the electronegativity properties. So next, question 12. Differ between electronegativity and the ionization energy. So here, because it asks to differ, we need to give the difference between the two important parts, electronegativity and ionization energy. So here, ionization, ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from the atom. So that's what you need to put in to pull it out. Whereas the electronegativity relates to an atom's attraction for electrons. So the difference is how strong the pull is that it let the atom has and then what energy is required to remove the atom. So in question 13, describe the vertical and horizontal trends in electronegativity among the main group elements. What are the two most electronegative elements and the two least electronegative elements? So firstly, we will describe uh, the vertical and horizontal trends. Electronegativity increases from left to right across the periods. So across the periodic table, it becomes more electronegative. And from top to bottom in the groups. So the top ones are the most electronegative. Next, we are going to uh, name two uh, electronegative elements and two least electronegative elements. So fluorine and oxygen are the ones in the top corner of the periodic table and they're the most electronegative atoms. Whereas cesium and francium are the two least electronegative atoms in the bottom corner. So question 14. Indicate the partial charges of the following covalent bonds. So for C, carbon and hydrogen. So carbon has an electronegativity value of 2.6. Hydrogen has 2.2. So because carbon has a higher electronegativity uh, value, it's going to be slightly more negative because it's pulling the electrons in closer mm -hmm. compared to hydrogen, which has a slight positive charge because it's further away from the shared pair of electrons because it's being pulled towards the carbon. Carbon and oxygen. Oxygen has a value of 3.4 so it's more electronegative. Carbon has 2.6, so this is going to be less electronegative compared to the oxygen. So that means the oxygen is going to pull the shared pair of electrons in this bond, so two of them, closer to it. So it's going to have a partial charge of a negative charge. The carbon has a slight positive charge because the electrons have been pulled over to the oxygen. Question 15. Order the following elements from the most electronegative to the least using hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. So the most uh, electronegative is going to be oxygen because it's in the top corner, followed by nitrogen, then ox uh, carbon, and finally hydrogen at the far, far corner. So just to sum up, Electronegativity is the ability for the atom to pull electrons closer to itself in the shared pair or the covalent bond. Um, so the most electronegative ones are going to be in the top corner around oxygen and fluorine. The least ones are going to be the larger atoms where the shell, they have many shells and therefore the valence bonding pair electrons are furthest away from the atom 